You're incredible, do you understand? Yeah. I'm serious. You think I could have done that without you standing next to me being strong? Are you feeling this? Are you feeling because I'm feeling right now? Yeah, I'm cold. You're cold? Yeah. Let's get to Virginia, man. Hey folks, I'm Ignaty Vishnevetsky. And I'm Alex Dowd. Welcome to Film Club. Film Club is our weekly movie discussion series where we talk about what's new in theaters and what's coming soon. Uh, what you just saw right there was a clip from Good Time, the new film from Josh and Benny Safdie. It's a kind of New York crime thriller starring Robert Pattinson, so we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, so again, uh, Good Time is the new film from Josh and Benny Safdie. Uh, the Safdie brothers are these uh, sort of quintessentially New York sibling filmmakers. I mean, they've been around on the indie scene for a long time. I remember right. seeing The Pleasure of Being Robbed, which I think is their debut feature, probably more than 10 years ago. I don't think I ever would have imagined that they would have matured in this direction yeah. while still holding on to their kind of obsession with uh, with a kind of a, a, a scummy, fuzzy, yeah, just this grubby, New sort York. of gross New York, you know? And and this is, I mean, if you've seen any of their films, uh, Heaven Knows What was their last one about mm -hmm. sort of junkies living in, in New York. If you've seen that, this is not a radical departure, at least in style. It has mm -hmm. that same kind of abrasive, literally in-your-face style. Yeah, it's, it's all these telephoto close-ups of people's faces for the most part. Uh, and it gives it a kind of a nerviness yeah, and a yeah. sense of urgency. Well, it's like the style always seems to be trying to keep up with how abrasive these characters often yeah. are. Well, because Robert Pattinson's character, Connie, let's be honest, he is an asshole. He yes. is not a, what you would call a likable protagonist. He's a, he's a swindler. He is a crook. And at the beginning of the film, he gets his brother into a bank robbery. His brother gets arrested, he gets away. Yes. And then we basically follow him as he tries to bail his brother out. The movie is essentially, it takes place over that single night. Mm -hmm. And it sort of takes a, a very sort of uh, conventional premise, which is one character sort of uh, back against the wall for an entire night uh, and invests it with their, with their particular sense of scrappy New York style. Well, I think it's, uh, part of what makes it work is that these characters really never stop moving yes. or trying to pull something off, mm -hmm. regardless of where he is. He, he, and he goes a lot of, he basically bursts into one person's life or another. It's a little it's miniature a, odyssey of him yeah. digging people over. <laughs> yeah, because he, yeah, he cons his way onto a bus from the hospital. Mm -hmm. He cons his way into this old woman's house. Um, he somehow ends up trying to sell a Sprite bottle full of LSD that he finds at Adventureland. <laughs> it's one thing after another after another, but we sort of share the character's tunnel vision. Yes. I mean, in a literal way, because our field of view is so limited. Yes. I want to talk a little bit about Pattinson, too, because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for kind of for years now, he's been sort of, in a lot of people's eyes, kind of redeeming himself for the Twilight series, mm -hmm. you know, and those films sort of, uh, as with Kristen Stewart, they didn't sort of give the, either of those actors really an opportunity to show what they're made of. Yeah. But Pattinson has sort of slowly been transforming himself into a, a sort of interesting character actor. Yeah, he's always been kind of a character actor in a star's body. Yes. But look, if you hadn't seen a picture of Robert Pattinson before <laughs> seeing this film, would you ever guess that he is considered a handsome man? I mean, he looks terrible. Like, well, yes and no, though, because the movie does play on his magnetism in a yeah. way, because he part of the, he, he's sort of running these scams constantly, and part of the thing is that he's able to do that because he has maybe the charm of Robert Pattinson, even beneath his sort of awful behavior. But his character is still kind of a doofus. Yes. I think it's part of what makes it work is he, these aren't elaborate cons he's trying to pull No, off. but he has a quicksilver intelligence about him, too. Yeah. You see in moments, I think what's fascinating to me about the performance is that it's raw desperation for basically 100 minutes, mm -hmm. but it's also him constantly improvising to get himself out of situations. And we can sort of see the wheels turning in Pattinson's head constantly. He's sort of out of the frying pan, into the fire, over and over again and him thinking his way out of those situations. When it comes down to it, I think what uh, makes the film really work, I think what really ties it together is that it has a kind of humane quality to it. There's something a little wonderful about it, which is that it clearly sort of empathizes with Connie, this crook played by Pattinson, but it also empathizes with every single person he screws over throughout the film. To some degree, we're always lingering on them.